Broston, get the flamer. The heavy flamer. Hi, I'm Edscar, and today I'm looking at some bits that I bought from Anvil Industries recently. Primarily because there's a few members of the Gaunt's Ghost community pointed me towards their various cloak options, including this camo cloak, which might make for a good Tanith cloak. Whilst this video isn't strictly intended as a review, it's going to end up as such, so it makes sense to cast a critical eye over them, which comes away pretty happy. These cloaks are very nicely sculpted and moulded with only one tiny imperfection in the form of some ley lines where the original version was 3D printed, which are so minor that I couldn't get them on camera and disappeared once they were painted. I tested the fit out on both Cadian and Catagen torsos, and while they aren't designed for these specific sculpts, they can be made to fit with a little bit of cutting and some milliput work. Interestingly, I felt that the resin was quite a bit softer, or more flexible, than the other resin parts I've had before, which might make them a little bit stronger if they get knocked about. I also picked up this second set of Wasteland cloaks, which aren't immediately the style of cloaks you might expect from the Tanith, except... After 12 years of being shipped from one war zone to another, and a lot of customization of equipment, including the cloaks, I find the perfect trim of most of my models to be a little optimistic. And those extra electromechanical doohickeys and bits will be a nice way to pick out some conversions for the specialists, like uh, Vox and Sweepers. At least, that's my plan at the moment. Testing again, these cloaks are also not a perfect fit, as they're designed for different types of model. But with just a little bit of cutting and a little bit of middle putt, it won't be too much work to make them look just about right. I also picked up some legs to mix into my army. These bionic legs can also sell the effect of a guard unit after a decade of warfare. These come as both pairs of legs, in fact two pairs but one's already been used, and two separate legs for you to kitbash onto something else. One thing I noticed after I made my order is these petite legs, which I think look amazing and I want some. Unfortunately, I didn't notice them before I made the order and um, yeah, I can't just go ahead and buy everything now, can I? I wish I could, but my income doesn't let me. I did get one pair of uh, kneeling petite legs, so that'll just have to keep me going. And so I got started with the kit bash with that bionic leg. And cutting a leg away from the Cadian section is pretty easy because of the kind of sticking out tunic. And then I just had to carefully shave but little by little off of the top of the bionic leg so that it would match up. It took a lot of care and attention and probably could have been done quicker than I made it. But before long I had the leg attached to the other leg and stuck down to a base. The rest of this first model is pretty much just a boring Cadian with the addition of one of Anvil's camo cloaks. Nothing all that interesting beyond cutting the tab off of the back of the body armour so that I could get it to sit how I liked. As the resin felt soft, I had a go at warming them up to reshape them, just to see how well it worked, and in this case, it worked really well. I could very gently flex it, and once cooled, it pulled back a little, but mostly stayed where I had put it. And this became very useful for making the shoulder parts sit flat. But for now, let's grab that heavy flamer. The Cadian Command Sprue that I received recently contains one flamer, one heavy flamer, but only a single set of tanks to use with them. So I plan on using this Wasteland Cloak to fill in for the missing tanks. Why does it have exhausts? Who knows? Space technology. It, it's fine, don't worry about it. There's even these little pipes already fitted, so that's a good fun thing to include in a conversion. For this model, who will take on the name Brostin, obviously, I had set aside a Catachin torso with a cool jacket. Ultimately, it's not actually all that visible in the end model, but, but it is there. I mentioned with these cloaks that a perfect fit requires some cutting and milliput, and that's simply as they're a different style to the ones the Tanith are usually depicted as wearing. They all have some form of buckle or loop at the shoulder to show that they're attached as capes. So if you're happy with that style, just glue them on and have at it with paint. But I wanted the more authentic Gaunt's Ghost look, so I cut these away and millipitted on the chest section of the cloak, ensuring that I join up all of the details as best as I was able. 
I have shown my style for sculpting complete cloaks, and this is basically the same as one of the easiest steps in that process. You've got a lump of plastic to push against and no dangling things to worry about. And any cracks that you end up with usually look like folds and you can kind of get away with them. Annoyingly, I missed the recording of this next piece. I essentially drilled a hole through the cloak right where one of those pipes ended and attached this plastic coated wire to act as a fuel line. It's just a piece of packing material holding something or other on into a cardboard box. But now that that's all sorted, I can jump onto painting which I'm not going to spend an awfully long time on. Except I could probably talk about something I've noticed while painting these. My last models were the Gaunt's Ghosts Character Squad, which I spent extra time and effort to ensure that they came out looking as nice as I could manage. Jumping back to just a bog-standard last gun trooper and Brostin, I halfway intended to drop back to my previous style of fairly swift painting. But these models became so difficult for me to paint, and I have no ideas other than I have a difficulty painting in a lesser style to what I have just been painting. That's not exactly the right way to describe it, but it is something I've heard more experienced painters talking about. Whether they're display painters, commission painters, or even just they've been at it for yonks, when you're painting that one model, the one that you're invested in making look really good for whatever reason, you step up your attention, your care, and your time to make sure that that model looks the best you can make it. But you also sometimes just want to finish models, for whatever reason, such as painting an army like I am with the ghosts. For those models, you need to know your own skills and your own abilities under limits like time or the amount of effort expended. And I have a controversial opinion. Neither speed painting or display painting are beginner's skills. They both require practice, and practice of different things. What I'm discovering in this video is that I need some more practice at speed painting. Now that I'm halfway through my Gaunt's Ghosts army, some of the models that I have coming are slightly less interesting ones, that don't really warrant a whole video by themselves, so I might put them aside and spend the time to enjoy them, just painting one at a time and really making them look nice, or I might just try and speed paint them, get them out of the way. I guess that's a bridge that I'll burn when I get to it. So here they are, two more models for my army. A last gun trooper with an augmented leg and Brustin managing to make use of the heavy flamer due to the gubbins on the cloak. Any imperfections in painting are for my relearning my own style. The resin components from Anvil are really rather nice to paint. I will just quickly compare them to the original 2002 and the new 2021 Gaunt's Ghost models. Here with the old ones you can see the sharper folds looking like heavy fabric. With the anvil cloak I used for my last gun trooper, it's more billowy and dramatic, flowing in the wind like a hero's cape should. I will also mention that this is the most billowy and dramatic of the set, and some of the others are a little more restrained. The newer Tanith models sit somewhere in the middle, with the appearance of some weight, but also some swish. However, they're also huge by comparison, very dramatic and over the top. I certainly think that anvil cloaks are a good choice, with the lowered hoods and variations of style, allowing some variation in your army, and making sure that that one conversion that would be difficult otherwise, you've got just the right cloak for it. And the Wasteland Cloaks are also a good one, in my opinion, allowing you to show some ragtag damage cloaks, but also the tech options that the ghosts probably have picked up over their years. I can see how this second option won't be to everyone's liking, but it's certainly one to have a look at. Well, that's two more models complete, and another video coming to a close. So, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching. I know I usually make one Catachan and one Cadian set with uh, each of these cloaks so that you can compare the differences. And because both of the models I made in this video have the Cadian uh, shoulders, I thought I'd go back and make a third, which I then, of course, also use Cadian shoulders for. Look, I'm running out of Catachans, okay? Someone send me some Catachans.